Hi, I'm Cosmo Lee. I'm here with uh, Jesse Hughes from uh, Eagles of Death Metal. They are uh, in town promoting their latest record, Heart On. First question I have for you, are you tired of questions of why Josh isn't here? No. Um, I mean, you must be getting, you must get that like every time you talk to, talk to an interviewer. I do. It starts off with why isn't Josh here? And then at the end, it's I'm so sorry I ever asked that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> He is my partner, and he's an equal member of Equals of Death Metal, but that doesn't necessarily mean in the performance realm. Mm -hmm. Josh was the captain of our gang. He's not only the, the other half of Eagles of Death Metal, and our gang at large is, is a big family, and um, we need him to be running it at all times, and right now he's producing the Arctic Monkeys' new album. And when it comes to the drums itself in an actual performance night after night, Joey Castillo is going to be a much more uh, ready drummer. So you have a special relationship with Denny's, and can you go more into that? Well, the weirdest thing happened. I get this phone call that says, Denny's wants you to make a menu item, and I'm like, yeah. So I'm told to stop in at the Highland Denny's. I showed up 45 minutes late, man, that's the truth. Mm -hmm. The entire Denny's was shut down just for me to be there. It's a real trip. And then um, they told me they had an executive chef that I was going to meet, and I started laughing. I'm like, yeah, right, you guys got a fucking executive chef. Right. But of course they have an executive chef. I want everyone to know this because, um, duh, it's a Denny's, dude. Right. And it uh, turns out to be the most wonderful thing I've ever done, and they are some of the most wonderful people I've ever met. In fact, they even brought me back to New York here to uh, DJ a party for them. Like, weird. I, I should. It's not even legal for me to handle food, <laughs> let alone for me to, like, name food or call food something. You know what I mean? Like, this food shall be called hard on a plate. That's great. So that's what you designed for them. Mm -hmm. And what was it? It was pancakes that were shaped like hearts on a bed of raspberry and chocolate sauce with white chocolate chips and chocolate chips sprinkled on top and whipped cream. Sounds good. Honey, it's amazing. Yeah. It'll get you every time. It'll get you. Like. <laughs> so I know you studied real journalism. Did you work as a real journalist? Yeah, for a Gannett news service called The Desert Sun. What kind of stuff did you cover? Polly. I love politics. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like that's like a part of you that you sort of have to put in the back burner when you do this rock and roll business? Rock and roll is probably the most purely political environment I've ever been in in my life. Almost every one of the experiences I had as a square, is what I call it, have served me so well in this world okay. where it is all about politics. Mm -hmm. Who do you read for uh, journalism? I still read Samuel Clemens. Okay. But, uh, uh, Crack Hour. I just think there's a lot of crap out there, though, so I haven't followed anyone for a while. Mm -hmm. I don't like people who share a single brain, you know, and that t tends to be the this typical political uh, atmosphere of the political journalist. So where do you get your news, then? I get my information from between the lines, basically, because that's mm -hmm. really all we have anymore to read. Mm -hmm. and, and they've already figured out how to bullshit in there, too, so... If it looks like an Indian and smells like an Indian, it ain't John Wayne, and that normally pretty much serves me well. Right. So let's talk about the, the new album a bit. Uh, your songwriting seems quite much more advanced from you know, your first album. Thank you. Do you have any particular influences in mind when you wrote this record? Oh, sure. Captain Beefheart. Um, ironically, The Outfield, Your Love. Okay. Every time I go out to a bar lately, uh, but you're hearing it singing and every girl in the world sings along, so I want to know why does a song like this get every girl to sing along? Because we always call the outfield the poor man's police. Okay. Which is like Terrence Trin Darby's like the poor man's prince, you know? Right. But that song is such a weird hit, and it's really about a dude who wants to have sex with an underage girl while his girlfriend's out of town. Yeah, awesome goals, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. but girls seem to love that. And I want to know what it is about a song that's really about a man cheating on his girlfriend with an underage girl that makes women around the world go, it's a love song. It's like, <laughs> it's weird. I think maybe too much uh, Desperate Housewives. So I know you like your ink, and I was wondering if you'd be willing to show us uh, some of your tattoos and maybe tell a story? Yes, I will show you my ink. So uh, which one should we be looking at? This one. Okay, the broken heart on the hands. Because whenever my son and I are apart, I'm a broken heart. Okay. These are my Russian criminal tattoos right here, the two little kitties. Okay. Um, this one means all power to the godfathers. Um, these what? are my clay deckers. Clay Decker did these before rock shows. Kat Von D did this one. Okay. Kat Von D did the Horvita, the eyeball. I got tattoos. These are the Eagles of Death Metal right here, see? 
So um, what's the best frame of mind uh, with which to get a tattoo? Wasted and blitzed out of your mind on Xanax or else stone cold sober. There's no a gray area there. It's just either or. Do you ever get tattoos stone cold sober? I only get tattoos stone cold sober. Really? So you, fact, put, you put some thought into it. That's the other thing. I never, like, none of these tattoos did I ever sit around and go, this one's going to be so important because it's like my mother and my father and the tail of this donkey represents my grandmother when she was given this horse by General Lee at Appomattox. Like, uh -huh. none of that shit matters <laughs> right. uh, to me. I want the most, st that's a stupid thing, I'll get that, you know, because I'm just marking an event, you know, like each one of these tattoos is a memory for me. This is Copenhagen, this is Berlin, this is uh, New Zealand, this is Hollywood, mm -hmm. uh, that's France. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's to me the whole reason to get tattoos is, is a, a reminder of how far you've been twisted by what it is you're doing because that's what it is. Mm -hmm. And uh, B, a, a, some sort of way to remember where you were because it's hard enough to do that as it is, you know. So, what are the craziest overtures you've gotten from fans? I've had some weird overtures. Yeah. I will normally go for it, though. You will? As long as it doesn't look like they've gotten anything that's full-blown or could be, or, uh, <laughs> okay. you know what I mean? Then right. I'll, I'll typically go for whatever, you know? Right. I was wondering if you feel any affinity to Molly Crew, who seems like a very, you know, L.A. entity, and, and write about it. I feel an affinity to them, but only in the same way that I feel an affinity to, like, AIDS. Or a Blue Bonnet Plague? None at all. None at all. Okay. I like Nikki Six a great deal. I think Molly Crew is one of the undeniable rock bands of the century. That's mm -hmm. a fact. But uh, Girls, Girls, <laughs> Girls is coming from a perspective that girls are like meat mm -hmm. and should be dancing around a pole. And I think they should be <laughs> dancing on the pole. Okay. Great. <laughs> Sounds good.